uh, crimes of violence, only 25% um, response by law enforcement is within five minutes. Another 25% is within six to 10 minutes, and 50% is beyond 11 minutes. In fact, um, there's uh, three to 4% of response time is within a day. I guess that probably is out if you live out in the middle of nowhere. But clearly, this data indicates that when it comes, at, at the end of the day, you're responsible for defending yourself. And I think this bill moves in that direction and makes uh, New Hampshire law better. But I would uh, have you take a look at the civil immunity part of the bill. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I'm not seeing civil immunity part of this bill. So if there's, I don't know if you've submitted. Well, the civil, uh, this, sec this chapter actually uh, uh, in 627 has a clause that everything within this chapter has uh, civil immunity. But it's, uh, I think I have it here someplace. Okay, if it's in the chapter, we'll, we'll find you it. You can take a look at it, but it's not a very strong civil immunity clause. Thank you very much. Thank Other you. Other questions? Seeing none. Thank, right, thank you. Much. Claire Evil. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Claire Evil. I'm the executive director of the New Hampshire Civil Liberties Union. I thank you for the opportunity to speak, and we are in, in opposition to the changes that are being suggested in this law. I would suggest to Senator Luther that if you are concerned about the issues that you raised, and I assume that there was sincerity in your voice when you raised them, um, that one thing you can consider is to take the language, the retreat from an encounter language, and create that as a rebuttable presumption. Then it becomes far less likely that anyone will be charged criminally or face charges in a court if, in fact, they are acting in self-defense anywhere, regardless of whether they're in their own homes. With the language as it now stands, you're going to create the 21st century equivalent of the Wild West. Um, but you should keep in mind that even in Tombstone, everyone who came there had to check their guns with the bartender. And so even though they could shoot each other at will, they couldn't do it in the town. There is a recent example that I think gives lie to the suggestion that this is going to, that without this, people are going to be brought to, to court and tried for their actions. Um, all of us remember uh, the incident several years ago where a young man killed a police officer and an individual who witnessed the assault with the vehicle got out of his car, went over to the young man and shot him dead. That individual was not charged. He could easily have been charged under the current language of the law because there was no reason to assume that he, sitting in the cab of his truck, was in any danger from an individual who had just run down a police officer. But he was not charged. The Attorney General made that decision. And so this is not a charge that is levied lightly. And I would urge you to move very carefully before you expand the constitutional right to protect yourself and your property to anywhere you are, at any time you are there, regardless of what you are doing. I thank you, Mr. Chair, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. Let's see if there are other questions. Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, Ralph uh, D'Amico. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Ralph D'Amico representing gun owners of New Hampshire. We support this bill. As a uh, byline and a uh, somewhat of a thought, um, listening to some previous uh, testimony, I, the question comes to mind, why is my life worth less in the parking lot on Warren Street than it is in my home? I don't understand the concept of why it's assumed we will act differently. If I am confronted with a threat to my life, I don't care where I am. If I feel that I, I have no alternative but to defend myself, I am going to indeed do it. And to say that you're okay in your home and you're okay 
on your property, but wherever you have a right to be, you're not entitled to defend your life, seems to me to be contradictory. Your life is worth the same. It's sacred everywhere you happen to be. That's all the testimony I have. Thank you very much. Other questions? Seeing none. Appreciate that. Uh, Keith Carlson. Good afternoon, Chair of Committee. I'm Keith Carlson of Keene. I'm actually just representing myself. Um, I am in favor of this bill. I'm not a firearms expert. Um, I did serve eight years in the military, though, and I do think this bill does make sense. Um, as I would like to note, um, that there's actually some towns in New Hampshire that don't even have cops. So someone was referring to the time it takes a cop to get to you. Just keep that in mind. So in some towns, the people um, have to police themselves. And um, I'll keep it at that, but just so I don't have to testify again, I would also like to say that I also support 378. So okay, thank well, you. I'll tell you, well, we'll give Susan an opportunity to switch gears and indicate that you have that, that support for the next bill will be here. This being Susan. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, are there questions before you scoot away? Seeing none. Uh, James Wheeler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. For the record, my name is James Wheeler, and I am here on behalf of the New Hampshire Firearms Coalition. We are here in strong support of this bill. We do not believe that a person should be forced with the decision of, is there any possibility I might be able to retreat and face serious face injury because they, they don't use defense because they might have been able to retreat, or using defendly force and being forced to um, defend themselves a second time in front of, in a courtroom. Um, I think Senator Luther brought up an excellent point when, in regards to the example presented by the, uh, by the Chief of Police um, Association representative. The, the situation that just described is one where whether you could retreat or not is a, is a very Particular situation, and it it would allow prosecution. Um, and while well, prosecution could occur anyways, that would leave a material issue of fact that the case couldn't be resolved immediately on summary judgment. Whether they could re retreat, if retreat is no longer an element um, that has to be disproven, if the shooting, if the requisite pre the requisite precursors to being able to use deadly force. An attack um, likely to cause serious bodily injury or death, um, certain um, forcible sexual crimes or kidnapping um, were to occur, you would not have to retreat. Um, and I think, that's, I think that's the appropriate standard that should be the law. I also think that um, Ms. Evil's um, characterization that this bill would allow you to shoot an anywhere at any time, what, no matter whatever you are doing, is um, way beyond what this bill actually does. Um, the, this bill is, you have to be in a place that you have a right to be or have reason, reason, could reasonably believe you have a right to be. Um, you might not technically have a, le a legal right to be in the street if you're not in a crosswalk. But you could pretty easily reasonably believe that you have that right. Um, that's why we added that, that phrase, or reasonably believed you have a right to be. This doesn't occur to the trespasser. It doesn't protect the trespasser. It doesn't break, protect someone who's breaking and entering. They have to retreat. If, the, if someone is clearly outside of a place that they have, they, they, um, they have no legal right to be. Um, and we believe that that is a, a um, the way the law should read, and we believe that this bill should go forward. Thank you very much, Mr. Wheeler. Those questions for Mr. Wheeler. Seeing none, thank you very much. Representative Balsaro, you would have signed in. Uh, I forgot to put the uh, check back. That's why I clarified that. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Senators of the Committee. For the record, Representative Al Balsaro uh, of Londonderry, New Hampshire. I'm 
state rep for Rockingham County and District 3, which is Auburn and Wondering. This is a touch, touchy subject for me, and the reason is I'm not coming here as a state representative. I'm coming here as somebody who has been in a shooting, somebody who not as a Marine, somebody who, as I've told you before this committee on a, a past gun bill, somebody who that was in a bar that we owned, a family restaurant, where of course I was in a position where I could not have my gun because I did not have a Massachusetts permit. Around missed me by a few uh, inches, but I wasn't concerned about myself because I was holding people down on the floor at the door where I had to stand up face to face. Okay, I was in a place where I had the right to be. But if uh, the people retreated, like the guy that kept running from it got shot. Okay, uh, matter of fact, he got shot a couple times in the back, okay, in the restaurant. What I'm trying to say here, the police officer, God bless them, they, but they show up after the fact. With today's society, we must be prepared to protect ourselves. And I, and I, like I said, my time in the military, I remember, like it was yesterday, paragraph A, as I said before, to protect myself, if I reasonably believe that I'm in immediate danger of death or serious body or harm. Or paragraph B, once again, to protect others, if you reasonably believe that they're in immediate danger of death or serious bodily harm. My automatic reaction was to protect the other people, okay, but I was standing there with no gun, no nothing. If I had a weapon to protect, the person that got shot probably would have never got shot because I would have been able to not, probably not even pull around, got my gun, or just even show or pull it out and say, hey, listen, back off when I seen the gun come in the door, okay? And I knew right off the bat there was intentions because while I had my phone down while the shooting was going on, I'm calling 911 with my cell so he don't know that it's going on. So this is very important. My car is my private property. If I'm out in the parking lot, you, the police need a search and seizure or something to go through my car. My individual person <coughs> protecting myself is my private property. I have the right, if I'm where I'm supposed to be, to protect myself. I'm hoping we fix this once and for all and we can save many dollars in court time for poor, innocent people that are trying to protect themselves out in the community with the amount of uh, things that are going on in the state. And that's all I have. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Representative Bonasaro. Are there questions for Representative Bonasaro? Seeing none, thank, thank you. Thank you. Chair call Chris Thornton. Um, yep. Mr. Chairman, uh, Claire Eagle pretty much expressed what I had to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Thornton. Um, Susan, I just want to make sure that uh, you got the echoes of Ms. Evil's remarks. Thank you very much. Um, that is all that I have that signed up to speak on House Bill 210. I will note that I have other people who have signed in in support. Uh, it is part of the public record. Oh. I didn't sign in. Could I just yes, of course. Good. Attorney Rice, <coughs> Attorney General's office, please. Thank you. For the record, my name is Ann Rice. I appear on behalf of the Attorney General's office in opposition to this bill. I did submit a letter in opposition but I also just want to reiterate a point that I believe I made last time, but I want the, the committee to hear again. Our self-defense law and the use of deadly force is a very delicately balanced law that recognizes there are times where in, in a person's home, the, the sanctity of a person's home, a person is allowed to use deadly force in much less, um, uh, under much less stringent circumstances. There was a question posed to you by a witness a couple of uh, witnesses ago that said, you know, why is my life any less valuable out in the public parking lot than it is at home? Well, it's not just that person's life. When you are out in the public, when you are not in your home, there are other people in the area. And you need to be able to consider not only the safety of that one person who may be reacting, but there's all sorts of other people around. And I think that's why our law has had this balance is that in the sanctity of your own home, you certainly are allowed, you know who's there, you're allowed to use deadly force in ways that you aren't allowed to use it out in the public where there are other innocent people there. So for those reasons, I oppose the bill. I think it's very important to maintain that balance, and I hope that you will consider that. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much for your answer the questions. Seeing none, thank you very much. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an attorney. I'm licensed to practice in Maine, 